Well, good day, everybody. This is Al Slavin. I'm just going to uh, continue on working on the uh, this little painting right here. It's a nine by twelve, and it started off as just a uh, just a study in grays. I just started bringing in the color, but it was just gray tones from uh, ultramarine blue and burn umber, and now I'm just kind of embellishing it, bringing some light. Light's coming from the left side. So I got a, you know, pop color on on the the leaves on this rock on some of that backgrounds back there. I could probably keep it in the cooler shades back there. But then I got to do the water. Uh, so I thought I would uh, film a little bit of it. I haven't posted on YouTube for a while, so I thought this is going to go there. Uh, what I'm using is ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Uh, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, and a uh, cadmium yellow deep. I'm about to bring some of that deep into this mix because right now everything seems cold. The uh, the greens are cool. Everything's everything's too too cool. So I'm going to bring this yellow, this cadmium yellow deep in here to to accent light. Once I get a little bit more of that green there. I'm going to kind of gradually bring it up into the light there. So Anyway, I got this close up so you can see it better, what I'm doing. It's at a little bit of an angle, but it beats trying to paint around that camera. So unfortunately, I don't have my palette where you can see it, but I'll describe it as we go. Okay, so right now I'm going to go into, uh, I'm going to make I'm gonna work the tree a little bit, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make a green out of the uh, cadmium yellow deep and ultramarine blue, and see how this comes out. The medium that I'm using is a homemade medium. It's not, I mean, I didn't invent it. I just did it. It's a uh, it's stand oil and. Uh, beeswax with a little cobalt dryer in it to give it some uh, quick drying time. The stand oil is good stuff. It, it's thickened linseed oil and um, it's refined, it's clear, and it, it's kind of syrupy. It's, it's thicker than linseed oil. And I like it because when you put it on the canvas it kind of spreads out a little bit. So if you're looking to do like a smooth canvas technique or a smooth panel, like this is the panel. It helps remove the brush strokes. If you like brush strokes, use a different medium. I mean, don't, don't necessarily use that. But you're only using one part of this stand oil mix uh, to about seven or eight parts paint. So it's just a little bit in there, but it gives it a little bit of a, a gloss. It um, dries overnight and um, it kind of gives you control in a way because where you place that paint it stays just it'll spread just gently so it's good stuff I'm just experimenting with it right now okay so I'm gonna bring some of this warmer light onto this tree and I'm just using like a number two filbert this is an ebony splendor from uh, creative mark it's a synthetic brush, but it works real well. I like it. Let's see what this does here. Okay, it's, it looks like it's gently warmer than, than what's behind it. And I'm doing... Um, it's kind of it's realistic to a point, but it's kind of impressionistic. I'm not trying to paint every leaf. I'm just giving you the impression that there's leaves there. I can do the whole leaf, you know, the exactness, but I don't. Not every painting lends itself to that.
so this is catching light and that just brought the leaves on the other side of this rock so that's kind of cool the key is don't cover up all of the green you just put in there. You kind of work around it and you let some of those gray tones show through. The grays are important to create the uh, that illusion of solidity. So you got to kind of work with all of it. Now the light's going to hit kind of randomly. Um, doesn't have to be totally uniform through there. I'm just trying to get like a little bit of design into the light. I'm going to leave that up into the blues. I'm going to leave a lot of that into the blues as well. I'm going to I'm going to stretch it back just a little bit by adding a little bit more white. I use titanium white mostly. But I tell you you can use flake white, which is a lead white and it um it's it's more transparent than titanium. Titanium white gives you a very large range of uh of, of light in a way. <clears throat> it's uh, has a very high tinting strength. Stay away from zinc. You don't want to do zinc white. Just stay away because it'll crack on you. It's not stable. I don't know why they still manufacture it. But it's something you really don't want. Just leave that like it is. Then back here, it feels like I need to put something back on there so I can bring a little bit of uh, a lighter value, maybe just a touch into the blues, but a little warmer than what's back there to bring out a little bit of light right there. So there's a little bit of a gap in there, which is fine. Gives it a little bit of depth. And when I bring some light onto the limbs, you know, it'll be, it'll tie together a little better. Thinking maybe a little bit more of that in here. If I bring some of this warmer light onto the rock here, let me get rid of some of this green. I'm just going to wipe the brush off a little bit. And then um, I'm going to bring in some yellow ochre and some of that yellow, cadmium yellow deep.
The thing is, this gets pretty rich pretty quick, so you gotta be careful. You want it to warm up without being just like this huge brightness. I'm gonna make it a little bit red. I'm gonna add a little, just a touch of cadmium red to it. Just to show the, um, just, to, just to show the warmth. Just knock the value back here a bit. Okay, let's see here. It's a little bit too pale. We're looking at more of an orange, which is nice. Kind of a reddish orange. A little bit back there. Lights coming through. <clears throat> it's just gonna pick up little parts of the the rock. It won't be super bright, but it is gonna catch it like in here. It skips. Make it a little bit, a little bit redder. Bring it down over here, where maybe it's catching right up in there. So if it's coming this way, or coming this way, boom, boom. Maybe it's hitting a little bit more. Right there. Okay. I'm gonna leave that like it is for right now. I'm gonna come down and do the uh, little bit of the water here. Play with that just a bit. So that water is ultramarine blue and burnt umber. I'm going to increase the blue, the brightness of the blue. Reflections from this rock down. I'm going to brighten up that that water. I'm adding just a touch of orange into it, just to gray it back a bit. I don't want it super bright. Okay. I'm going to put this lighter in there, and then I'm going to work it down here to where it's, it's working its way towards us. But it's going to get, it's going to be a gradation from that light to a, to darker and uh, 
more a little richer in the color as we go down but right now I'm just going to kind of establish that water line there then we'll reflect onto it as well so make it look like water right now we're just going to try to get a smooth transition as we get closer we get a little, we get a little choppier in here kind of show some movement Add a little bit more blue, <clears throat> blue to it. And just a little more blue. Yeah, that's bringing a little more of that color in there. Now I want to drop some of these reflections in. Basically darks coming down, so... Let me get... Um, let's see, when water... The thing about water is... When it... When a dark drops down into the water few things can happen but what happens a lot of times is the uh, the lights turn a little bit darker and the darks turn a little bit lighter so it diffuses whatever's above it just a little bit let's see what this does going in there I'm gonna try to break up that edge where it's coming down I say once we get this dark in there then we can reflect the, the rock into it
and usually as we come farther away from that the rock base it'll get a little bit it'll start diffusing it'll get a little lighter so I got to get the dark enough and the close to it here then we kind of go from there but kind of feel the uh, kind of feel it out here So that's it's coming along. See that it gets here. overlapping because this little rock formation here is going to reflect in as well and I'm going to go ahead and gonna darken it up a little bit more towards that base a little bit darker on this one because it's closer to us So that gave us a little bit, um, a little bit of dark to go on there. Now, depends on how far you want to take this. I can reflect some of this tree in here. You know, some of the darks in there. I could continue on, but I kind of like the way it looks here. And yeah, just a little bit on the other side of that highlight, just to give it 
some reality. Okay, I'm going to pause there for just a second. 